welcome to the Roll for Combat Actual Play Podcast, where our intrepid adventurers are playing through the Pathfinder adventure, The Fall of Plaguestone. Join us every week as our daring adventurers face treacherous monsters and deadly obstacles on their quest to save a town from utter destruction. Lead on, listener. Your quest awaits. Do y'all have any more questions for Amara, or can we get out of here? Lauren Sieg is playing Prue Frosthammer, the half-orc spirit barbarian. Nah, yeah, sounds like we probably ought to go follow up on some of this other stuff. Jason McDonald is playing Brixley Silverthorn, the gnome champion liberator. Yeah, you have a couple leads. You know that she said maybe check out the body. She said Trin can be found around town. Pinnock, no one's exactly sure where he stays. I believe in the barn or something. Uh, was there anything else? I think those are it. I figure the body and the kitchen are right next to each other. We could probably do both of those at the same time. Yep, that's true. Y'all want to start there so we have ammunition to hold against the other two if we find something? Yeah, that's true. we probably get all the information from the non-interview stuff first and then talk to people. That way, if we need to, we can press gang someone when they smell floral. Yeah, let's go check out the body then. Yep, let's go. A gruesome but necessary task. You go back to the feed mill. Once again, it is dead quiet. Once again, the only person here is Delma. as She's cleaning up the place and trying to make it ready for hopefully a dinner rush. She looks at you and says, Did you find out anything? A little bit. Oh, really? What? What? Hopefully some good news. Oh, well, it's best that we keep the details to ourselves at this point until we have a, a clearer picture of what exactly happened. Vanessa Hoskins is playing Celeste Carvassalon, the human angelic sorcerer. Speaking of which, can we can we examine the well the unfortunate the unfortunate man who has passed? Sure, of course, of course. She leads you to where the cellar is. You can go down into the cellar. Down in the cellar, alongside a number of large casks of ale and a few old dusty bottles of wine, you see the body of Bort. His flesh has turned a odd blue color in death. What hmm. do you do? I'll confirm that he smells like the poison, maybe up near his mouth. You go next to his mouth. You take in a deep whiff, and sure enough, you do smell the faintest impression of a floral odor, not just from the mouth, but from the entire body. Sure enough, I smell the faintest impression of a floral odor. She looks at you and is like, Oh, what does that mean? Means that we need to match up this odor to the kind of poison that killed him. If you don't mind, we're going to sniff around the kitchen. Oh, uh, by all means, if, uh, if that helps. Everyone get in here. Smell Bort so you know what we're looking for. Get in real close. An odd request, but okay. So I'll take a sniff. Sniff. Is everyone sniffing the dead body? Yeah, I guess so. Breathe it in. You breathe in the floral scent. The body doesn't do anything. And now what are you going to do? Uh, can I go explore the kitchen? Of course. Yeah, I think we're all searching the kitchen as far as I know. I am anyway. Sure. Should someone search the cellar in case the killer hid down here first? Whatever you want. You tell me. If that's where you'd rather me search, I can stay down here. Yeah, let's just leave one person down here to look around, just in case. The rest of us can take care of the kitchen. So who's staying downstairs by themselves in the cellar with the dead guy who's now purple and blue? I guess I'll do that. I'm the probably the least concerned with corpses. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Uh, as soon as you volunteer, Celeste scampers up into the main uh, building. So you go up and, yeah, tell me what you're going to do. You're up in the main building. There's the bar next door. There's the cellar, the kitchen, the dining room, the grounds. Definitely want to search the kitchen first. That's the main plan. Yeah, search like the pantry and food stores. and You guys can give me all perception checks. Uh, in theory, they're hidden, but I, I don't care. You guys can roll them. I'll roll it, too, just in case there's something downstairs. Well, 20's not bad. Yeah, that's a nice one. Cade, are you joining us? I will uh, make some perception checks. Rob Tremarco is playing Cade Thistlerot, 
the halfling rogue thief. Of what? Where are you going? Brixley search the kitchen. Celeste search the kitchen. Prue search the cellar. I will tell you the results in a second. You just do your search and I'll tell you what you all. Uh, what, what, like, can I search the immediate area around where he's at? Of course. The dining room. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Just give me a perception roll. I'll tell you what you find out. 12. The kitchen first. Brixley and Celeste search the kitchen. You go through the skillets, the knives, the mortar and pestle, roasting spits, sieve, and the butter churner. You uh, don't have a match to that smell on anything. You even check all the herbs in the kitchen, and it does not uncover a match, nor is the smell similar to that ground clover in the mortar and pestle that was used in the spice in the dishes. So there's nothing in the kitchen that comes close to matching the smell. So this sounds like this was added secondary. The cellar is actually fairly old and dusty in um, the wine and some areas. And it looks like the foot traffic that goes through here is pretty regular going towards the food stuff and up and down the stairs. It doesn't look like there was anyone hiding or doing anything nefarious down here from what you can tell. If they were doing something like hiding, it probably would have disturbed the dust. So that looks like that is clear as well. As for the dining room, you look around where he was sitting, but there's nothing remarkable about the table or the chair where Bort perished. That is what you've discovered so far. I'll come back up up top then. Well, did you find anything? Nothing yet. No, you couldn't find that smell anywhere. Yeah, the cellar's clear too. We still have the barn. Huh, check the barn. Okay. So you go outside to the grounds, and there's... Had he... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Had he... Um, had Bort started setting up his sleeping area, putting anything uh, wherever he was going to stay for the evening? He actually stays... He doesn't stay here. He stays back in his cart. If you remember, he had a private cabin on the cart mm. and in the cabin is like where he kept everything and he sleeps there i'd like to take a look at that then if i could sure you can go back and talk to the caravan people and i'm sure tamil she was the uh, half orc the female half orc chief she uh you talk to her see what she could arrange for you anyone want to come with me oh uh, well first are you search searching the barn let's do the barn first yeah, we're right here at the barn. Yeah, give me some perception checks. Well, well, well. You're looking around the barn when Cade sees something. He sees a glint of glass just outside the stable doors. What do you do? A glass? Mm-hmm. I go up to it. It is a small green vial with a simple cork. It appears to be empty. Was it hidden intentionally or like chucked? It looks like it was chucked into the ground in the hay. Give it a sniff, why don't you? Uh, I give it a sniff. You uncork it. It's empty. You uh, give it a yeah. good old sniff and you you smell traces of a floral smelling liquid. Well, well, well. If I remember right, pretty sure it's Pinnock that's been staying in the barn. Is the bottle this fancy? I actually, yeah, in the handouts, that's the bottle. This is not a simple bottle. No, it's actually a very nice bottle. It's a uh, green, small glass. has some filigree on it. It's uh, definitely a fancy bottle. Um, is there Are there any marks or anything on it? Nope. Nothing like that. Hmm. No maker's mark for the bottle, even, since it's such fine work? Nope. It looks like whoever sold this obviously knew it was for nefarious purposes and did not put anything that would trace it back Cade knows this being a unscrupulous thief yeah they don't uh, put their moniker on uh, things like this another fine poison made by Cade Thistlerot is that what you put on all wait yours? a minute that's not what I put on <laughs> well maybe they should take pride in your work come to Cade's poison emporium for all your murdering needs well obviously we have to talk to Pennock. the question is how are we doing so? We'll get to him, but my guess is someone wanted to frame him, but we'll see. We want to do a good cop, bad cop him? Oh, uh, like, like Good a game? constable, bad constable? How about good constable, Celeste, 
bad constable, me. Worst constable, Prue. And then back like to good it. again, back to good again with Brixley. I like it. Kind of all over the map, but okay. Well, I suppose we could give that a shot. Uh, where can we find him? Well, this is where he sleeps. I think that's all we know. Can we find where he sleeps in the in the barn? Can we find yeah, like this spot? Is there a room that he the place he calls his room? Sure, sure. Let me search it. Uh, well, Edra's there. Edra is the halfling stable hand, the female halfling stable hand. She works in the stables at the barn, and she takes her job very, very seriously. She actually also lives here, and she's taking care of the animals while you're looking around. And um, she looks at you and says, uh, oh, uh, how, how can I help you? Did you find anything? This murder is so terrible. Where did Fennec sleep? In here. Oh, Fennec, yeah. He sometimes sleeps in the barn, but uh, he has other places, too. Uh, I don't know where he sleeps. He, he's here sometimes, though. And she shows you over, like, kind of in a little corner, like a little haystack, kind of a clean area. Uh, it actually looks quite cozy. It's like, he usually sleeps over there. Let's search it. Sure. Yeah, agreed. Mm -hmm. Lots of rolls. Prue with the 16. It's the highest. Uh, Prue looks around, and yeah, there's... I mean, you all look around. There's nothing here. It, it's just there's no knickknacks. There's no personal effects. Nothing like that. It is just just a bed, and that's it. Hmm. Does the stable keep have any ideas where we could find him? She thinks, and she's like, "Well, let me think." You know, when the fight broke out, I saw Pinnock flee right away, and uh, uh, now I think about it, I saw Trin leave through the stable door soon after, uh, clutching a wound on her cheek. Hmm. I. I'm not exactly sure what that means. But while you're here, uh, I need you to help me with something. You know, it looks like that your ho your horses, they've all become infested with biting fleas. Uh, I'm doing the best I can to help them, but uh, I, I need a bushel of uh, rosemary to, to brew up enough ointment to treat, to, to treat your animals. Otherwise, they could get sick and, and even die. Do we look like botanists? Well, it's your animals, and... Uh, Unfortunately, the, the one area that I know where the, uh, the rosemary bush is, it's uh, 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 a little dangerous. Fine. What does rosemary look like? Well, um, uh, I can tell you where a spot in the woods nearby that is, that is thick with the plants. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I also know that that is also where a, a ferocious old bear sleeps. She likes to sleep in those bushes. So, um, yeah. Uh... All right, let's kill a bear to get some rosemary. Or you could just sneak in and take it. Or you could sneak in and take it. All or right. we could try All to right. tame the bear and use that as our mountains to the horses. I like that that idea best. Let's do that one. All right, plan A, I sneak in and get rosemary. Plan B, train the bear to love us and let us ride it. Plan C, kill the bear. Is that right? That sounds, sounds right. right. The ABCs of getting rosemary. That's right. That's how you get rosemary and how you possibly defeat bears. Actually, get ready to ride that bear. Get the bear saddle that you've been keeping with you this whole time in the hopes this would happen. Here, I was holding on to it. I hand Brixley the bear saddle. Let's do this. Do you want me to sneak in there with you? I have a bit of a talent for uh, keeping out of sight. Uh, how about stick close? Okay. Like, like I don't want to, you know, have it wake up and maul you i can maybe get ready from it better i don't know just keep an eye on me from where you are okay all right point the way to this copse of rosemary bushes she points you and tells you where it is it's a it's a small hike uh, maybe about 15 minutes away to the north northwest of town like in um in the forest well i guess we're gonna hike it then you go to the location you hike through the lovely woods it's uh mid-afternoon at this point let's say you've been attacked by sturges stung by bees and now bears you get it it's the bears and the bees and the bloodsuckers it's the three bees the killer bees that's cute i'm gonna keep my weapon drawn same okay oh geez especially now that you show us the picture <laughs> <laughs> oh christ is he asleep yes does he sleep with his resting rage face <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the most having, having really bad dreams right now. 
<laughs> Who the fuck pissed off that bear? <laughs> Celeste is uh, Celeste. You still want to sneak by that bear? I know if it's making that face. Has everyone seen like the Marvel Zombies series? This bear yes. looks like one of those zombies. <laughs> it does. Anyhow, so sure enough, in front of you, about thirty-five feet to the northeast, is a huge grizzly bear sleeping. Technically, it's a large 10 by 10 grizzly bear. Sure enough, it is sleeping. And you can see the plants nearby. You probably could sneak over and grab a few, assuming you don't wake the bear. What are you going to do? I'm going to sneak over there real quiet-like. Real oh, slow. Real quiet-like. Before you go, can I try something? Sure. Uh, Celeste reaches out and puts a hand on you and sort of mutters while making gestures with the other hand and casts Sanctuary on you. It will last for one minute. Ah, all right. Just in case it wakes up, this should hopefully prevent it from attacking you. Can the rest of us back up so we're not on this battle map? (laughs) (laughs) Stay within 30 feet or 60 feet. If you really want to go off the map, I'll let you go off the map, but I'm going to warn you, you will no longer have line of sight to where Kate is. So you're going to have to hear if he's getting eaten alive and then Don't run worry, for I'll help. scream. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll stay here. I want to keep line of sight on just in case. All right. Here's a signal if I need your help. Oh, God, it's biting me. Are you, are you all stowing your weapons? I'm just making sure. None of you are going to be prepared for combat, right? Is that right? I am. I am. I'm I'm just going to leave my weapon back in town. I don't need it. What? Oh my gosh. (laughs) What? (laughs) Why would you need a weapon? It's just like the most monstrous looking bear I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) It's just the worst animal we've ever seen so far. This is is a true demon beast in earth sign form. Yes, I'm going to keep my weapon out. Grixley, do you still want to ride it? Uh, maybe. Wow. (laughs) By the way, I'll have my sword out. Good enough. All right. I take whatever precautions I can mechanically within this game to make this sneaky roll sneakery, more sneakery. I will use a hero point if I have to. Like, I mean, it's a secret roll, right? So I don't know if it fails. It's a secret roll, but this is how I'm going to do it from now on because it's more fun if you do it. You're going to roll a d20 three times. I'm going to choose one of them. You're not going to know. I'm going to go in my head ahead of time. I'm going to pick a one, two, or three. Okay. That way you also get kind of an idea of how you did. I did this before at Gen Con. It actually works very well. because That sounds fun. Still, okay. Yeah, you still get to roll, and you kind of get an idea if you did really well or really poorly. Or you have no idea if you <laughs> roll like all okay. over the place. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to write a, a draft email and send it to Jason. But don't send it yet. You don't believe with me? One, with one, two, or three. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm on his side. I <laughs> know, I'm kidding. Jason? Yeah. It's it's number four. Take a picture. I accept that. Of a number you write down on a piece of paper and text it to my mom. Got and it. Then, <laughs> okay. Here we go. I'm going to make three stealth checks, correct? Yep. 18. 21. Doing pretty well. Okay. Okay. Nothing can go wrong. This is the greatest. Everything's fine. Oh, there it is. Ah, oh, let's see. Now, at what point do I get to say I want to spend a hero point? I'll tell you. Because I want to. I do want to. If that's my role. Okay, you move. Uh, your movement is. What's your movement? Is it thirty or 25? 25, 25, 25. 25. 25. But I'll take two moves and then gather. You know. Well, sneak is actually one action in one move you actually have to keep doing it okay and you stride up to half your speed so i'm gonna say this is about as far as you get it looks like you're gonna have to go that's a, fine like one more and so far so good it's pretty soundly sleeping and you feel okay. like you did a really good job you didn't step on anything all right i will do this again what's the rest of the party doing while he's sneaking in biting our nails <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just waiting in one, case the worst wow. happens. One. That's the one. Twenty-seven. There we go. Ooh, not, so not terrible. Not terrible. Thirteen. Oh. Twenty-six. Oh, man. Okay, you sneak. Actually, that's not even where you. That's where you go. Right 
next to the bear. The bears <laughs> pluck it right from under his paw. Yes, yeah. It's like you're like you're like lifting the paw. It's like one of those movies where they're like trying to steal the key, yeah. like out of like yes. the old uh, <laughs> like in the old prison cell and like the western. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. you're like going in. You're you're getting some rosemary. The grizzly bear is just snoring away. You hear feel its hot breath on your face. And uh, it moves a little, and you like hold in your breath. But sure enough, you you manage to uh, take the rosemary. You have more than enough. You think that you need to to help with the biting fleas. Now you also think to yourself, you know, if I really wanted to, I could really do a lot of damage to this bear. It's totally, totally flat footed. Totally, it's a mobile, flat footed, helpless. I might be able to kill it. But if I miss, this thing will probably kill me in one blow. What are you going to do? I mean, I can't coup de gras a bear. Is coup de gras even a thing anymore? I was just looking for that. I don't know. Why would you anyway? It's just sleeping. Let's just go. I'm just curious. But yeah, I, I would not F with this bear. I, I don't feel confident that I could do enough damage to a monster demon bear. I think all you would do is automatically crit it at best. It's like it's just right. like automatic crit with so attacks. So you would do a ton of damage. Right, but if you don't kill it, you're in deep trouble. Right. I also have to roll after that and then double it, so yeah, not confident. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Peace out. All right. Peace out. All right, give me the stealth to get away while it's snoring away. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that's not a good roll. 14. 20. <laughs> Here comes the third one. I wonder which number I chose. We're going to find out. Oh, uh, I'm gonna do a hero point if any of those are the ones you didn't choose. Well, I chose one of those three. You chose one of those. (laughs) If if the the one you chose was the shit one, either Uh, of the 14 or the 11. I chose the four that you rolled. Yeah. Uh, Take away my hero point. Here it comes. Okay. I like this hero point system. 19. Uh, There you go. You were about to step on a really big twig. And make a big snap, and you felt it breaking under your foot, and you're like, <gasps> and then you like slowly pick it back up, put your foot back down. I think what happens is I step on the twig, he kind of wakes up, but then I sing a lullaby, and he goes back to sleep. Oh, that's totally what happened. Okay, mm-hmm. I want to hear the I want to hear the lullaby then. I'm saying I'm bear. Okay. And I just gently pet him in the head, and then the. And I put some honey on his mouth, and he goes to sleep. Prue falls asleep. Oh no, Prue's asleep. That that lullaby was just so beautiful. <laughs> okay, you're back with your fellow friends. The bear I'm is s- sweating, fast asleep. You have, uh, you have the rosemary. It appears to be covered in sweat, as is your clothes. <laughs> Hey, uh, easy, uh, easy as pie. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Okay, you go back to the stables. Back to the stables. That was a really good job. You did great not waking up that bear. Uh, thanks, thanks. I thought you were about to be a snack. Glad to see I was wrong. Me too. Oddly enough, me too. Good job not dying. Okay, so you bring back the rosemary. And you get a whopping 80 experience points for sneaking past the bear, Ooh. believe it or not. It's very good. Nice. Yes. So I believe that brings us to 350. No. Hardest 80 I've ever no, earned. No, more than that. This no, is 500 now. No, more than that. I've actually been keeping track. So Oh, the Sturges. I don't know how much the Sturges was. Right. You had the Mangy Wolves, the Caustic Wolf, the Drunken Farmers... Um, you had the Bee Swarm, which was 40, the Tour Veterans Folly, which was 30, the Sturges, which was 80 for all of them, and now the Grizzly Bear, which is another 80. So you have 590 experience points to date. Nice. That's what I'm calculating, too. Yeah, more than halfway to level two. Sure enough, you bring back the Rosemary. She's quite thankful. She's like, oh, this is why you're heroes, and I'm just a little stable hand. Well, thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to turn this into an ointment and get rid of the biting fleas. Uh, uh, did did you encounter some wolves? Because I, I, I think the fleas came from wolves. Oh, I uh, guess there were some wolves on the road. Oh, then it doesn't surprise me. Yes, uh, them wolves are infested with these biting fleas. You don't have any on you, do you? 
No, sorry about that. Uh... Well, you you might want to check your clothes. You know, check all the nooks and crannies and uh, your undergarments and such. They they can get into anything. Gross. All right. Do we have any other business at the barn? My crannies. Your barn business is done. Do y'all want to go talk to Pinnock, or do you want to try Trin? I think we need to find the Bean Goblin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Trin ran out with a wound on her face. Uh, as soon that as might be we- more urgent. Yeah. And then you were also thinking of going to um, Bort's cabin. That's right. We can always split the party. <laughs> yeah, that's a good <laughs> no, idea. No, so no, no, no. Do we want to go to Trin's <laughs> or do we want to go to Bort's? Trin's. Well, which, which one's closer? Um, Bort's is pretty close. It's just with the caravan. Uh, you have no idea where Pinnock is. And um, you, you, you literally have no clue. So that's kind of a nothing. As for Trin... Trin lives in a small turnip farm on the southwest of town. So Trin has a house nearby, as does Bort's caravan. They're pretty much the same distance. Okay. Let's go see Trin then. All right. Sounds like we'll go see Trin. You know that Trin lives with her Marnie. They live in a small turnip farm on the southwest side of town. Uh, actually, sorry, Trin and Morney. Morney is her brother. So they both live in this turnip farm. Appears to be the family farm. You arrive at the farm, and as you arrive at the farm, you notice something very strange happening. You're approaching the farmhouse when suddenly you see Trin running around the farmhouse with a large boar chasing her, and she's Screaming for help. What do you do? Ooh, we should help. Boars, bears, and bees. Let's get it. Roll for combat. Boars, bears, bees, bloodsuckers. Here we go. Cade, you have one round to, well, do whatever you want. You actually see them running, and sure enough, right. about pretty far from you, about 65 feet or so to the north of you, is Trin running to the west with a boar chasing her. Try not to ruin the meat, y'all. This is good eating. Staff sling, 80-foot range. Here we go. After my move of 25 feet closer onto the field. I'm going to say that field is difficult terrain since it's... Uh... Oh, I won't step onto it if that's the case. Hold on. Yeah, you can go next to it. I'm just saying if you guys want to try to traverse it, it's definitely going to be hard okay. to traverse. Not that you are, but if you wanted to. Boy, you uh, Are you sure you know how to use that thing? Because a uh, two. I look at misses. it. Miss this. May, this it's weird how it's weird. This, this this thing might be broken. Do you get another action? It was one, two. <laughs> one more. All right, here we go. Oh, that actually hits. Uh, wow. Even, uh, wait, does you that have a minus, minus four? Minus four. Oh, let me check. Yeah. Minus four or minus five for that one. You still hit with a let minus five. Check. if You actually hit. What's the yeah. range increment on that though? Uh, it's 80. Oh, then you hit. Yep, you hit. Even the minus 5, you hit. So you hit and do okay. 9 points of damage, and the boar's like, Rawr, does not like that. Rawr, blah, blah. The boar oh, is no. ignoring you, <laughs> and is chasing oh. Trin, and it's like right on Trin's butt, although then doesn't quite, but it doesn't quite reach her. Uh, just about to get her. Celeste is up. Alright, so Celeste is going to oh, 25 feet. Celeste is going to run up as far as she can to the edge of this uh, patchy field and throw a ball of fire at this little boar. Never mind, the boar's out of range. She's going to move up, and then she's going to ready an action to throw a little ball of fire at this boar if it comes within range. Okie dokie. Brixley. All right, Brixley is for the, up for the more uh, straightforward approach. Bricks it up. 20, Bricks it 20 up. for one move. According to Hero Lab, you have a movement of 25. Oh, I might, actually. I thought it was 20, but it could be 25. All of you have a movement of 25, I believe, at least. I saw that in here. All right, there's two moves, and I'm going to dr- draw my weapon. Oh, <laughs> you're like, you're going to, like, olay it? <laughs> Possibly. True frost hammer. Another animal is in your path. I don't know what's going on with this town, but I'll pull my heavy flail off my hip and do two moves forward. Hello. Look at that. Standing next to Brixley. You're making a wall. You're done? Oh, that's three actions for me. Trin sees you 
and runs toward you and hides behind Brixley. She's like nudged in between Prue and Brixley, snugging against you, Brixley, like holding you like, help me, help me. This boar looks like it's going to charge you full on. Cade is up. Move 25 and take another staff sling, sling shot. You hit another oh, yeah. nine points of damage. It's a 1d10, so yeah, good job. It looks like it's it's it looks dizzy. It looks like it's it's nearly dead, but it's still ready to go. Got one more action left. Another shot. Okay, make it count. Otherwise, Brixley's go. <laughs> That's not good. The boar does its charge, aka the boar charge. Double action, strides twice, and then attacks Brixley. Right, as soon as it's charging through my range, I'll use a reaction to throw this little ball of fire at it. Hey, that's not fair. You hit it. Seven points damage, but it's still up and alive. Dang. It's oh, good. no. It's gonna. It's doing its charge. It's putting its little horns down. It's ready to push Brixley up into the air and make him flip around like a circus clown. And he misses with a two. <laughs> yeah. But he still gets one more attack. It's so angry that it whips its head back around and tries to hit you one more time. Hits you that time. Rolls a 30. <laughs> well, minus five. Uh, 25 okay. hits you. Pierces you for... Oh, sorry. That actually is... Uh, double check. Oh, yeah. That's incorrect. An extra six points. Fifth. Points of damage. Rixley looks like he's about to drop. Celeste is up. That's some pig. So just in the nick of time. Oh, Brixley is 35 feet away. He needs to be 30 feet away. All right, that's fine. Celeste is going to move a little bit closer to what's going on, standing behind Cade. And then she is going to use her last two actions to cast a heal spell uh, directly on poor Brixley. This gives it a range of 30 feet, and it does a D8 plus 8. Thank you. Uh, so that should be 13 points of healing. Brinkley comes back for the brink of death. Wow, you are almost dead. And now you're back to normal, almost. Brixley, you're up. Well, I'm going to attack, since I took all the trouble to take the sword, the rapier out in the first place. You hit. Four points of damage. It's still standing. Oh, minimum damage, yeah. I'm going to try another attack. Miss. And I'm going to raise raise my shield with my third action. Ah, raising the shield. True is up. Okay, I'm going to use one action to move around the pig so I can flank it. I'll use another one to channel ghosts into my weapon. And then I'll hit it using uh, positive energy for my bonus damage. I don't want to spoil the meat with negative energy. Okay, you rage. You attack. You fail. Trin is like pushing Brixley. She's like like using you as a shield with your shield up. She's like, kill it! Kill it! That's what we're here for. Cade, Cade sticks the staff sling in the ground like a flag, runs up with a short sword drawn. And stabs this pig. Stab that pig. So is that two? That's two actions. But third action to stab. Yeah. Here's the stab. Two. Damn it. You're not going to hit it. Uh-oh. Does that mean the boar goes? That's right. The yeah, but... Goes. But what? But Brixley still looks delicious. Oh, Brixley looks delicious. How did we whiff so hard on this pig? I was sure it was going I down. Great. I did great. You guys, it's your guy's fault. He tries to hit you, smashes into the shield, decides to whip around at Prue, misses Prue with its attack, and then does its last attack at Cade. It's all over the place. Miss, miss, miss. Look at these rolls. A two, a five, a six, a seven. Six, yeah, five, six, seven. Look at that. All oh, crap. Celeste is up. This pig is surrounded, and yet it won't go down. Celeste is going to move so that she's got a nice clear line to attack this thing. 
and threw a little gout of fire, and she's almost giddy about it. She's turning into quite the little sadist. She didn't know she could do this. This is exciting. She doesn't feel as helpless. Roll a five. You barely miss the poor pig. Oh. Now what? Uh, that's it. That's three actions. She moved, and then she uh, attacked. Brixley. All right. Time to attack some more. You're going to miss, but you have flanking. So you hit yeah. and kill the pig dead. Yes. I've done my heroic deed. Pig slayer. <laughs> you know, you know, ribs goes great with deer. We'll have a mighty feast. Yeah, we could use this for sure. So the boar is dead and Brixley has a little bit of damage. Uh, nothing a little healing or cure light wounds or hand touching would do. Take care of. Oh, baby. Um, she, Trin thanks you profusely. And she's like, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I'll, 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 I'll offer to address and cook the animal for you. Yes, yes. Come on in, come on in. Uh, grab the beast and we will have a nice dinner. Is it enough to feed, like, the caravan people too? Definitely. Well, not that big. Yeah, great. Yeah, I really want oh, them to huge. get some of it. Oh, no. Should we yeah, invite we them bring over a, for a barbecue? Sure. We can bring it back to the feed mill. Sure. Good old pig roast. Yeah, you want to do a pig roast? Sure. Go right ahead. You're going to have a big old feast back at the mill. That might not be bad. Let's see. You can get some blood suckers, although they're not too tasty. You got some uh, honey. You got some rosemary. And you got some pig. I bet you can make something out of all that. Oh, and don't forget to turn. Don't forget to turn. Rosemary, rosemary, honey, turnip, slow cooked pig stew. I'm in. And a feast will probably attract. Fennec, so that's good. Honey glazed pork sounds delicious. Uh, but don't forget, you did say you were going to go back to the feed mill and have dinner tonight with Amora. Yeah, that's what we were just saying. Okay, yeah. so you're all going to go back. All right, well, let's all we're going to go, gonna back go and take, the, take the, the pig feast. But yeah, let's find out why the pig was chasing her and what happened to her wound and all that. Yeah, we do need to talk to Trin. That is why we came here. Sure, sure. As you're uh, walking back to town... You can see that the bruise is visible on her face. She says, oh, oh, yeah, this pig, I'm not sure, just sort of uh, came out of the woods and was chasing me. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of crazy animals around here, if you haven't noticed. Uh, uh, it's kind of dangerous sometimes around here. But uh, um, what, what, what can I do you for? A witness said they saw you run out of the inn right when the bar fight happened, nursing a wound on your face. What can you tell us oh. about that? Oh, um, well, yeah, I... Uh, I was hit in the face with a mug, and uh, I left the bar because, uh, you know, sometimes those bar brawls get completely out of hand, and uh, I don't want to get hurt. So uh, uh, whenever those, whenever that happens, I, I often leave and, and come home. Uh, uh, Delma knows this is a fairly, uh, you know, common occurrence. Uh, if it's a quick, a quick one, I usually just go hide in the barn. But uh, uh, after getting hit in the face, I decided to come home. Why? Is there something wrong? You sound a little nervous. More than a little. Why? Well, not, not at all. What are you talking about? Funny you should mention hiding in the barn. We happen to found a vial of poison in it. Wouldn't know anything about that either, would you? She's looking at you incredibly confused. She's like, what are you talking about? Anyone else can chime in if they want. I don't want to take up all of our roleplay space. Cade looks and holds up the vial and looks at her face as he does and try to, like, gauge her reaction, you know, with a, uh, like, you know, a sense of motive. I think that's just perception now. Yeah, it's just perception. Now. Awesome. Yeah, you don't roll it. I roll it. She looks incredibly confused. She has no idea what you're talking about. Now, dear, just calm down. I'm sure everything is fine. We were just concerned about you. After all, you did get hurt. Um, tell us, do you know who threw the mug at you? No, I have no idea. Again, this happens all the time. You saw what was happening. There was chairs and bugs flying all over the place. What? What? Did something happen? Uh, why are you acting so strange? It was just a bar brawl. These happen all the time. Uh, yes, well, things got somewhat out of hand. Um, and there was a mix-up with some of the food. Uh, we were trying to track down. Now, I believe you were uh, the one who was serving our table. Is that right? Yes. What, what are you talking about? What mix-up? Oh, just a bit of a mix-up. Uh, so when you... When you were serving it, no one asked you to do anything with the food. Pl playing a little joke or something like that, did they? She's awfully confused. She's like, what 
are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. So it turns out that one of the dishes that you served us was poisoned, and someone got very, very hurt. What? She's like stunned. She's like, what happened? What are you talking about? What do you mean poisoned? That's poisoned. And what happened and what I'm talking about is trying to find out from you why there was poison in one of our dishes. She's like horrified. The blood drains from her face and she seems to actually stagger and sit down. She is horrified. Um, She's like, what happened? What are you talking? Did someone die? Yes. Bort is dead. Oh, my lord. I, I left after the fight. I, I didn't hear about that. I've been here ever since. I was going to come in tonight for, for the dinner crowd. I didn't know. He died? You're saying I did it? I had nothing to do with this. I have no idea what you're talking about. She's all, like, defensive now. She's, like, very confused. Is well, this a good time to say sense motive or perception? Sure. She's, she just seems like she's trying awful hard to me. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll do it again. No, you don't do it. I do it. Uh, oh, okay. Don't do it. Oh, crap. <laughs> All of you have a pretty good feeling that she is genuinely shocked by the merchant's death and has no idea what you're talking about. All three of you feel that. Plus, Quickly, do you want to chime in then? Plus, uh, the draining of the blood from her face is a pretty hard trick to pull off. She looks at you and she says, I'll, I'll help however you need. I I can think about it. Let me think. I, I was serving food while Korath served drinks. Uh, I spent most of the night going back and forth between the kitchen and the tables. Uh, I recall serving you all your food, including the turnip porridge, right before the fight began. I, I, I was near the table, uh, dropping off the desserts, and then all of a sudden I was hit in the face with a mug. Uh, I was a little bit blurry after that because I was really dizzy from getting hit. I, I left right away and, and staggered home. Uh, and there, my brother took care of me. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't recall seeing anyone near the food that shouldn't have been. Uh, I, let me think. Amira Amora has usually prepared it and, and Finnick plated it. Uh, and uh, that's that's it. As uh, Korath was serving drinks. You said Korath was serving drinks, but Amara told us... Panic and Trin were the only helpers in the bar. What's going on with that? For the food, yes. Uh, uh, I, Amora handles the food. She does not handle the drinks. Okay. Maybe you could help us find Fennec then? Fennec? I have no idea where that devilish little man is. He uh, he just sort of keeps to himself. I, I hear he sleeps in the barn once in a while. Yeah, we look there. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea where he could be. He... He, you might want to ask around town. Uh, he, he could be anywhere. He, uh, he sometimes, uh, I hear he, uh, has some, uh, some house somewhere, uh, out in the woods or something. I'm not exactly sure, but I do know he spends time out there. Wait, we had a house? We, he has a house? We heard, we had heard he mostly stayed in the barn. Well, again, you know, I do talk to him once in a while. He does stay in the barn every so often, but uh, I hear he has, like, a shack or, uh, uh, a little lean-to or, or something that he spends time in the forest. Uh, again, he, he doesn't really stay around or mix with other people, and sometimes when he's bullied by some of the meter folk, he'll, he'll, he'll sulk in the forest. Do you think you could give us directions to this shack or this house? I, I have no idea where, where it is. Uh, I can... I can uh, you might want to ask around town. As I said, uh, uh, I know he's there. I don't know where, though. Uh, it could be anywhere. The woods are rather large. Again, he keeps to himself. Did Fennec have any friends in town? Not really. I guess you can say, uh, 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 uh Delma is probably the closest thing he has to a friend. Well, maybe we'll ask her then. Okay. With that, you all go back to the tavern. It looks like, sure enough, Amora is there. She gives you a smile as you walk in. She gives you a bigger smile when she sees the boar. And she's like, we shall have a feast. And Delma also gives you a big smile thinking, oh, this is going to be a big help to try to bring business back to the place. And even gives a little smile as she sees Trin. Because definitely going to need some help serving tables tonight. All right. Oh, by the way. Yeah, you managed to kill the boar. 
So you got another 60 XP. You now have a grand total of 650 XP. We're getting there. I'm just ready to cast my ghost spells. You don't get those. I'll, I will get ghost spells. You watch. I don't believe you know them. Just you wait. You've been listening to Roll for Combat, a Pathfinder actual play podcast. If you have a question or comment for the show, please visit us at RollForCombat.com. You can also find us and play various role-playing games on our Discord channel at Discord.RollForCombat.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other social media platforms. You've been listening to Roll for Combat. Until next week, always remember to attack the darkness. <laughs>